Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all over the world. And this is episode number 343. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with my cohort in life and co-host of this show, Mary Lou. I hope cohort has a good connotation. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to. Hi, everybody. So great to be here today. Praise God, we're in the season of the story of Esther. And that's always an exciting time for me. I, I just know there's anointing that's available during the seasons that, that God has. And boy, do we need favor right now. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, in fact, while I've been preparing uh, for the uh, conference now to hear the watchman getting my message together, uh, Mary's been doing some outstanding research she's going to share with you here just in a minute. And, you know, Mary is, and in fact, I'm uh, going to go this afternoon and get everything packed up for the conference and there is a there is an expectation in my spirit about this one. Mm -hmm. I, there's been a lot of intercessory prayer um, because there's there's a lot of occult people in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and there's I don't have any doubt that there'll there'll be some witches attending that that conference. And so I'm just praying extra that that God will bring conviction of sin. That there'll be such an anointing there that uh, not only Everything defeats everything of, manifest, of yeah. darkness, but that but that there will be souls saved. Absolutely. Deliverance done. And, uh, Father, in fact, right now what we do is we just pray over this conference right now. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over every participant, whether they're a speaker, security, Father, uh, those working in the hotel, and every single attendee. And, Father, we bind up the enemy from interfering in any way. And, Father, we just ask that you would loose an anointing of the power of God. And, Father, that there would be an explosion of the kingdom of God at this conference, that your saints would be empowered, that uh, every plan the enemy has would be thwarted. And, Father, that if there's anyone there that does not know you as Lord and Savior, Father, that they would yield to the gospel, that they would fall on their knees. And, Father, forever be touched by heaven, that the coals of the, of the kingdom of God and the fire of God would be loosed in their lives, and they would submit themselves, spirit, soul, and body, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, never to serve darkness again. And, Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And uh, excited about that. Uh, they're moving forward. I, I've not had a chance this week to get a peek at uh, what they're doing over in Diggins. I know they're putting up the uh, uh, the framework for the uh, drop ceiling. And uh, next week we'll be meeting with uh, some people for the, uh, for the PA, the audio, and the video. So that while that is uh, kind of the frameworks being done, that they can go ahead and run all the wiring. And uh, once they... Uh, once uh, everything else is done, the wiring will be there. Then it's just a matter of buying the equipment, getting everything in place. And so we're really excited about that. Um, you know, this what with what God's doing at this place. This is simply a, a thing of obedience to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, God's uh, putting some new things in my spirit. Uh, we're maybe rearranging the way that we're doing some things with Biblical Life TV and stuff. Uh, to number one, accommodate more time for writing. Uh, I'm, I'm waking up sometimes in the middle of the night doing research and writing again in, in, in my sleep. And uh, usually when, uh, when that begins to happen, it's, it's time to write and time to begin putting things together. And there's just a, uh, just a fresh anointing that I believe is coming to, for things to help prepare the remnant and to bring healing and restoration to the body. Mm, for sure. Um, we've got, we've got to, do what you know i can tell you because i've watched mike ride and he gets in a a frame of mind that god gives him and he can just write and write and write and then there's other times it's just not there so we've been talking back and forth on how to arrange things to where um we can accommodate those times of writing <laughs> because we're just you know we're we're creatures of habit and and sometimes you got to work with that to get things done and to recognize it and and so I I was hoping that you can have your next book done by the time we have our first conference. And so, oh, I so believe, I believe you it'll, know, it'll be a matter more of, of getting it in print mm -hmm. uh, because it's, sometimes it's taking eight months or more to get a book in print once you even to get everything to the publisher. Well, and th things can turn around. Yeah. You know, um, I think what's going on 
everything that's going on that's being pushed right now, not going on, I should say, but being pushed is the plan of the enemy. Oh, absolutely. I they, think they've God, gone into overdrive. God is aware of all of it. He's working in the midst of it, obviously. Uh, but I don't, I don't think this, this war is a plan of God at all. <laughs> I think this is the plan of the elite because they're on that, their agendas. They're, they're pushing a World War III because it works into their plans. You know, they're, they're not worried about nuclear war or anything like that because they got, they've got bunkers. They have cities and, underground. And they would love nothing more than to just have enough people to just serve them and, and uh, you know, be the workers for them and then be the, the ones that are in charge. That's, that's how they think. And um, it's, it's really interesting when you look at, at the story of Esther in conjunction with what's going on right now in the world. Uh, because there's, and I've heard many ministers say this, Mike, that there, there's been an onslaught against God's people like nothing they've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, good Christian people, people that love Jesus that have, have died, that have, uh, have suffered with sickness, still can't get over the sicknesses. I mean, are still suffering all kinds of tragedies, all kinds of, financial uh, disasters and so if there was ever a time when there is an attack on god's people it's now the plan is to wipe us out just like it was in the days of esther oh it's, it's the same spirit and i wonder if that's not part of what's going on with this whole conflict in russia uh you know there were there was evidence of things going like they would not allow they were, they're trying to rule out abortion uh they have come against the lgbt and uh, from their perspective, uh, with the influence of the uh, Orthodox Church over there, they look like they look at the West and and not necessarily the government, but the religious side and the people, many of the people in Russia, uh, believe that they're the last bastion of Christianity that, that can actually flourish in the earth because it's the government is, in, it's, long as you don't mess in politics, they're pretty favorable of, of the Orthodox Church there in Russia. Well, if you know everything real research, not just what we've been spoon-fed all these years and and the history that they want us to believe. Um, you see just how perverted this nation has been for a long time. Yeah. And who's in control and what the Freemasons, the people in the occult have, have accomplished. And when I say Freemasons, I'm not talking about your everyday Freemason high that level. just joins the, the, the lodge and doesn't understand everything. I'm talking about there are high-level people that are manipulators in all of this. And, you know, even um, you'd, you'd be surprised at how pagan they designed our nation. It'd blow your mind if you, if you read some things, even about the colors red, white, and blue. Yeah. About, about why a witch can take those colors and take the flag and take the stars and use them because we have been absolutely blinded to the paganism that has overtaken our nation and we've just it's been under the guise of this is patriotism and and everything is great but you would not believe the pagan origins that's why it's it's been so important for those that are fighting what's going on right now to you know disengage all of that stuff now i'm i still say the pledge of allegiance because i just i'm you know i've always loved the nation i don't love what they have done, and I sure, when I say I love the nation, I love the people because I've seen so many good people in America. There are a lot of bad people too, but that, but I believe the grassroots of America are moms and dads that just want to get out there, make a living, raise their kids. And when tragedy <clears throat> happens, they're the first one that rolls up they their are. sleeves and goes to work. They are, and because of that, I believe that there was a godly foundation way back mm -hmm. When, what, that God had a purpose for this nation, then he can use. Yeah, there's been two com competing destinies yeah. and, and, and different foundations since the very beginning. But you have to be careful in the whole perspective you have as far as, as looking at the nation based on you don't want to get on the wrong side of God <laughs> because there's so much pagan stuff. doesn't mean that, that uh, we're not loyal, that I wouldn't lay down my life. I've, I've proven that through the years, um, but what it, what it means is that we've got to see the truth and pray accordingly. If we're going to get in God's will and we're going to see from his perspective, see, there's a, there's a worldview that God has that we can't hardly see because we're nation-minded. And, and there's, been, there's been so many horrific things done, not only um, in the United States, but all over the world. 
I mean, there's horrific things been done and manipulations and and horrible things done to, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I can't see that there's anything of God in any of these nuclear weapons. Why would he want anything that would destroy his creation, the earth? Well, and in fact, if you read my first book, it goes back to the fact that it was probably originally of Nephilim origin uh, with the war that God, according to the book of Enoch, that God created between the, the, the first level sons of the watchers. And I document how that the, uh, the, there's writings from India that document that as well as physical proof of, of uh, nuclear uh, glass from nuclear yeah. fusion uh, in ancient Egypt. And so we, we need to realize that, uh, in fact, Oppenheimer, when, when the guy, uh, one of his assistants, after they set off the first atomic weapon, he said, you're the first man in, in history that's ever done this. And he said, no, I'm the first man in modern history. Well, I think, that's, I think it's so important that we ask God to continue to reveal the truth because mm-hmm. that's what he's doing right now. You know, I, in everything that's going on, I'm seeing God reveal truth about things that have been hidden before. And, you know, Congress uh, in the past has been really good, uh, especially the workers of the enemy that have been put in Congress have been really good about skewing everything. You know, they pass bills, and, and it sounds good. It sounds like, oh, they're going to give money to our troops and, and help them. And then, you know, over in the way down, a thousand pages down, then they put all their junk in there. I've always believed there should not be anything like an omnibill, that each each uh, thing needs to stand on its mm-hmm. own. And, you know, one of the things in this, this is kind of some of the things I'm going to be touching on either in uh, the the conference to hear the watchman or the the video that i'm doing for defender when you look at now what they've done remember there's there's five levels of a way of civilizations you know rise and fall according to weishaupt okay with the illuminati and the one that it all crumbles is bureaucracy and after that there's aftermath when you look in america if we could compare like if i had a chart there would be this little dot that we call elected officials Okay, whether it's the president, our congressmen, our senators, or whatever. And then you have this huge circle that almost eclipses the page. Unelected bureaucrats mm-hmm. that always stay the same. And you, when you realize that um, the, our elected officials, our senators, our congressmen, they don't write the bills. They, there, is, there is this uh, enclave of bureaucracy that they say, these are some things we'd like to do. And these guys go to work and begin writing and they put so much stuff into these bills. Now, once the bill is passed and becomes law, they can take one law and they can, then they have the bureaucracy. They'll write a thousand regulations off that one law that may not even have anything to do with that one law. And so I think one of the things that we need to be doing as believers is not only being involved in the election process, but beginning to seek the face of God that there would be a supernatural Holy Ghost purge of the bureaucracy because it now that's what that's one of the reasons why uh, you know when when President Trump was in there the whole system was against him because you know the bureaucracy I I see is you know the intelligence community the legal system uh, the State Department and and just the, the thousands and thousands of federal workers up there that have been uh, inserted for life. Uh, that that are very progressive, that are very liberal, that are a part of this agenda. And we need to pray that, God, there would be a, a, a change, a sea change mm-hmm. in the bureaucracy for the sake of our nation. Well, the only way that, that we can continue without the judgment of God, which, is, which I believe has already begun, mm-hmm. um, is we'd have to have a lot of changes. But I think that what God would pay much attention to is the huge group of people that are trying to get those changes done. There are so many people that are working to get um, the laws passed, even in the states, to to limit the abortions and to do away with with the ungodly things that are going on. I mean, it looks like we're fighting a tsunami, but with God's power behind us, I believe we could get it done. The main thing God wants, and and we see this um, even in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, he wants somebody to to righteous people to stand against it. I th- I think if we if God would open our eyes, because regardless, uh, you know, I, I tell people I hold two citizenships. The first one is the kingdom of God, mm-hmm. and it is transnational. That uh, when I when I see persecution of uh, the Christians in China, 
their persecuting citizens of the kingdom mm-hmm. are in are in let's say let's say in in in, in uh, the Middle East, and that's first, and that and that is greater than any other nationality that we would that we would hold. Okay, so when this stuff is going on, we're almost like in that moment where Elijah uh, and his servant woke up one morning and they were surrounded by the enemy, mm-hmm. and his servant is freaking out and, he, and his prayers. God opened their, his eyes. There's more of us yeah, than there are them. That's right. Because well, and- we we have we have an elder race that's also in the heavens that's fighting for us, and it's the angels that they're they're working in the background to do things and to change things. Aren't you glad that they that a huge portion of them didn't fall? Yes, they stayed true to Two-thirds. to Almighty God, and that's that. I take such comfort in that, guys, knowing that that there are angels surrounding us that. Uh, have charge over us, that heed the voice of God's word. So when we're when we're in the kingdom and everything's flowing like it should, their job's easier. <laughs> they don't have to try to go and try to, um, you know, prevent a disaster when we're out in the world and we're sinning. And it's it's much easier the flow. And I believe that there that it increases the further you get in the kingdom. I think the greater the number of angels that are surrounding you. And boy, have I been thankful. Because they've protected us so yeah. much. And there's no weapon that man possesses that can hurt an angel. The only thing that can restrict their activity is our sin. Mm-hmm. And that's why we got to get it out of our lives. Well, in the story of Esther, and we'll just give a quick synopsis. I know most of you know it, but uh, Esther was a, a very humble, sweet Jewish girl. And she was chosen by the king because he got displeased with his wife, and so he was going to get another one. <laughs> and so she went through a preparation time, and uh, she was chosen by the king. And during this time, uh, Mordecai was a, a Jewish person that wouldn't bow to Haman, who had been chosen by the king to, um, to be one of his leaders. And so it was really ticking Haman off. And uh, so Haman started a, a plan, a scheme, that he was going to wipe out all the Jewish people. And actually, um, he was called an Agagite. Uh, he was descended from the royal family of the Malachites, which were always God's people's enemies. And um, so she was... Uh, all because King Saul didn't do what he was supposed to do, most likely. That's what many speculate. Yeah, there's been a speculation that that uh, he was a result of the ones that got away. <laughs> yes. And so um, I looked up the name of Haman, and there was a couple of, of different uh, derivatives of it. They said that it's uh, derived from the Hebrew word Haman, and it means to make a noise, be tumultuous, roar, disquieted, trouble, clamorous, concourse, cry aloud in an uproar, loud mourning, rage, and raging. And I thought, well, he was raging all right. Uh, one of the, the key things that, that he did um, is he he manipulated. I mean, he was smart enough to to <coughs> keep hidden his hatred of the Jews. He was just going to yeah. manipulate the situation. He had the secret agenda. That's right. And uh, it was interesting as I was uh, reading through Esther. I wanted to read uh, Esther 5, 9 through 14. It says, um, now Haman had got promoted. And so it says, Haman went forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai because he wasn't, he wasn't going gonna to show him honor. It says, nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zareth, his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and all the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared for myself and tomorrow, and I invited her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zareth his wife and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king into the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. 
And what I was uh, was thinking about there is, boy, doesn't that sound like Jezebel? With when uh, King Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard, and she said, "Oh, let's do this," and she had this plan, you know, to where he was going to get it. And I thought that sounded just like it. And and I thought, you know, that um, that that's the same type of spirit working. You know, you know, I, speaking in the ear, manipulating. Oh, yeah. You know, too, when you were doing your research on Haman, not only was it you know the ravenous, the roaring, and all this, there was an, another. Uh, translation that talked about splendor and all these yeah, different magnificent, things. Magnificent. Magnificent. Mm-hmm. And really, Haman is an archetype of of the son of perdition, the Antichrist, uh, in the Old Testament that was set against God's people. And one of the things I did in my first book is to show how the characteristics that he could be this most sophisticated guy wearing a $10,000 suit and and almost like he was from Hollywood and the perfect politician. Everybody's just swooing over him because he's so suave and debonair. But at the same time, he could turn on you in a heartbeat and be the most ferocious savage that would do things that would make a Nazi blush. Well, those those are the type that's, people that's that, that kind of worry you. Because I'm, I'm always better off with somebody just comes at me full force. Then I know what I'm dealing with. But I, I'm always... Just don't be two-faced. Well, and yeah. I've seen so much of it, and especially with program multiples, because there are levels and different personalities that will come up and just blow you away. Um, I just, I just kind of am, am slow to, um, you know, understand the, the situation. I'm, I'm slow to make a judgment on anything because it can change in a heartbeat. I, we've seen it. And so, you know, we need to ask God for wisdom and discernment on situations. And he gives it. He's so good to give us what we ask for. You know, one of the things I was thinking, too, about the theater war that's going on right now in the Ukraine, I believe for the elite... Because I, I think there's there's always layers of, of truth. There's layers of things that they're wanting done. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, f- just watching this over the uh, – it's actually been almost, what, five years, six years. They've been really fomenting this whole thing of war with Russia over the Ukraine. They tried to do it during the entire Trump administration. Uh, there were rattlings of it during the Obama administration. It seems like NATO and all this, there's been like fanning the flames. There is an agenda here that no one is sharing, that it's it's something of the elite. Now, one of the things that I have been thinking in my own mind is that they have to, because any anytime blood is shed, okay, whether it's a car accident, uh, an abortion, uh, if, if, if a witch curses somebody to death, all that's considered a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same on the theater war. Right. If you have those in the occult, that set the stage for that war. And guys, uh, World War One, Two, II, and Three were planned right after the Civil War, okay, by the Illuminati. So one of the things that we need to begin doing, because I, I think they need this war to increase the bloodshed because there are so many states and even other nations that are coming against abortion. Oh, we can't have that, can we? And so the the, the bloodletting of, of, of offering uh, up sacrifice uh, in a sense in one area of the world is waning so they have got to begin creating another place where these things and these tragedies happen and so one of the things that we need to begin doing is not only praying that God would keep his people safe which other whichever side of the line that they're on but we need to begin pleading the blood of Jesus over every drop of blood that is shed in this conflict that mm-hmm. Satan could not use it That's to gain right, power. Because he will. And that the occult cannot use it yeah. to gain power in the name of Jesus. Everything they do is for a purpose. And and they take that that bloodshed and they do build on it. We learned that years ago when we saw that. Um, they can take a car accident they, and do that. Well, they would do it on purpose. They yeah. would cause the car accident and then the death, the bloodshed. Yeah. They would use to build power, and they would do it around certain dates, you know, the high yeah. dates. So if there's magic used in the formation of the accident or the conflict or the sickness, mm-hmm. it's a sacrifice. And I, I think one of the things that, we're be, that we need to realize is that there are spirits involved in the conflict that's going on today. You bet there are. You know, if you look at it from, like, God's <coughs> perspective, looking down at the whole world, um, what... What is involved in all in all of this, the, the very root of the plan, you know, whether it's Luciferians, Satanists, uh, all the different groups, is they want to stop God's people. They want to stop God's plans. 
and they want to manipulate to overthrow God's kingdom. That's at the root of everything. So if you look at it from that perspective, you can you can get a better a better view of where where all the things that we've heard about the new world order, the great reset, um, this this is playing right into their hands. And I I sit and listen to it, you know, because I listen to enough of the of the regular news so I can see um, how bad they're going to skew it. And all the people that in the past have worked with the enemy's agenda were pushing this war. Yes. And they're still pushing it. The and military so, industrial, industrial complex is pushing the war because it ups the sales on both sides. And so we, I mean, it's, it's quite, the, quite the deal. <laughs> but going back to, to Esther and the, um, what's going on there, obviously um, Mordecai came to, to Esther and, and told her, you know, if you don't stand up against this, you know, uh, God will still save save his people, but you may not, and your family might be saved. And he was just encouraging her, you know, we're, you're brought here for a time such as this. And boy, if you can ever see an appointed position that God put her in to save her people, isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Isn't that something? And I tell you this, the, um, the story of Esther is so significant. And one of the reasons I know is because of how the occult have used it. And I wanted to um, share with you something that, before I go on here, um, that the occult do. I'm having a hard time getting my pages to turn. Hang on, guys. Um, well, I don't know if it didn't print out. I maybe didn't have it. Well, I can remember it. Um, there was a... You know how I've always said that there are geometric um, triangles, things that, that they use. That's why I like the pentagram, the hexagram, all these things are so significant. If the they've pyramid, got, yeah. You know, uh, because they use that. And one of the things that they do in the Eastern Star is they have the points on that pentagram. And, it's, and one of the, the – there's several of the names are from the Bible, and one is Esther. And – it's the same type of setting as um, they do in witchcraft. They just the women don't know it. You know they're not. They don't think anything they're doing is wrong. They just are going through the rituals. Um, but there's a, a triangle of battle that witches use, and it's um, it's got the the name of Esther on it. Is the same triangle that's used in the the Eastern Star, and so I can guarantee you that that they're using everything that they have for those uh, triangles of battle to promote this war. And it would even count for those that are, have ever been in um, Eastern Star in the past or those that are in it today that are doing these triangles and standing on that point of Esther. See, Satan can use those things. It's why it's why people get you know just sit back and think well how does Satan get this done and he shouldn't be able to attack Christians and yeah it's because we are ignorant of his devices and and if Satan can get you to do something pagan stand in a pagan position all these different things he not only takes glee in it he uses it yeah or if we're lackadaisical in our walk it causes uh, it causes uh, gaps in in our hedge of protection I mean there's there's so many things involved that. Uh, easy believism has really destroyed a lot of aspects of, of true biblical Christianity uh, in the world. And that's why we need to take the commandments of God seriously. We need to take our spiritual warfare seriously. And we need to take seriously when sin gets into our lives because it rips holes well, in, and in our, in our, you in know, our I've said it before, but protection. wouldn't it have made a difference to all of us when we were young if we had a teaching uh like this that showed you how Satan could take things and just destroy your life with it, I think we would have all had a second thought about some things we've done. But, you know, we just, we've been ignorant of it. Yeah. And it's not been taught. You know, it's, and part of that's because they left the Old Testament out. You know, everybody just focused on the New Testament and Jesus and, and praise God for it. But back in the Old Testament, it showed you all the things that, that Jesus was going to have to die for. Yeah. It's you know back then they didn't allow a witch to live because what she set in, in in on course what she set into action and the the demons that were loosed and the horrible results of that 
they ha- they couldn't allow it. It it would have it would have disrupted everything if it had been allowed. So God said, "You can't allow it. She has to be killed." There wasn't the blood of Jesus to get her saved and and undo what she'd done. Doesn't that make more sense to you? Doesn't yeah. that and it, it doesn't make God such an executioner as it was? He was trying to make a way. I mean, you can't just let that stuff go. Now we've got the blood of Jesus. We've got the the, the every curse was broken when Jesus did what. Yeah. what he did and when you when you look at it and you set it back into context it wasn't them leaving israel trying to hunt down witches it was within their borders right. because if you allow this stuff it, it I mean, there's even not only a witch but uh it said listen if if she so affects the community that that entire community has l- aligned with her then the entire community is to be taken out because it, it's like a cancer it is like a, a spiritual cancer, cancer that will that will take over and it'll and metastasize it'll and mas- just take yes. take over everything and so um if you think that they you know think a minute for that they they defiled the story of esther they defiled her name they defiled um everything about this story and and so this is this is a season that we can tap into. There's an anointing for this season to overthrow the plans of the enemy. Yes. Because whatever's going on right now with the, them trying to start this war, whatever's going on anywhere in the world, it's, it's for these purposes, to stop God's people, to stop God's plans, to manipulate, to overthrow the kingdom of God. And to set up something for the reset, the new world order, to... Uh to uh, reduce the influence of Christianity in the earth, to set the stage for the son of perdition. Mm-hmm. That it's all about that, uh, and then they they will do it a thousand different ways. But there's 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 more going on, especially when you you see the players uh, that are that are fomenting this. You know, I, I think it's funny that during the entire presidency that Trump was in office, everybody was saying he's going to cause a war with Russia. He's going to cause a war with Russia. He's going to cause a war with Russia. And now that Trump is no longer in, the very ones that were harping that he was going to uh, create a war with Russia are now saying, let's go to war with Russia. Let's go to war with Russia. It's, well, it's, it's, they're schizophrenic yeah. unless, it, unless it's, there's a plan that they're all being fed. Well, you know what gets me, Mike, is even though all of that junk that they were spewing was disproved, yes. disproved, they can't, and they still act like it's there. I mean, yeah. it's it's like they can't change the narrative. They're all on a script, and they have to stay on the script, and we must be like little robots and never get off the script. You know, eventually... It, it makes them look like idiots. Well, eventually, it's going to be so clear to everybody, even people that don't know, you know, the type of things that we know, that, that have never heard, you know, any of the, the conspiracy theories, we'll say. They're going to be looking at them and saying, you know that, I remember hearing that was disproved. Why are you still saying that's true? You know, it's because it, it, it goes with their narrative right. that they want to produce. But it, eventually, everyone's going to see it. See, I think God is exposing things where people that even aren't alert or maybe don't pay much attention to the news, they're going to start questioning things, and and is really going to question it when when they start seeing their finances. And that's see, that's the thing that that we've got to prepare for because no matter what's what's going on, there's no way that we're not going to have problems. Yeah. And we've got to prepare, you know, for the food and, and getting the sale items, doing what you can to, to store up, store up water. I mean, we just, I don't know what all is going to happen. I never have known what the plan is to shake the nation back to God. And so because of that, I'm going to tell you, prepare with everything you've got, but let's trust and let's pray every prayer that God gives us because he's not God's not raising up people to pray against these things unless he has a plan. Come you know, on. if this was God's God's will and there's nothing you can do to stop it, you know, he's not going to waste his time having his people get on their knees and pray about certain things and repent for things and 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 look to things that if this is World War 3 we might as well just give it up. Yeah. You know, there's it's it's not like he's saying uh, hunker down, make a bunker. He, he's saying pray against these things, right. and then there's there's a reason for right. that. And I, I think that it, it brings us back to the heart of God. And in, in the midst of all this, uh, Jesus is the center of everything. It's all about Him getting soul saved. 
It's all about him exerting and him getting back the nations. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons they so fear Christianity is because while they're trying to take all the nations and to prepare them for the son of perdition, our job is to intercede heaven that the nations would become his inheritance. And the difference between the Old Testament stories and the New Testament stories is Jesus gave us his authority. Yeah. We have authority over these demons that are working with these these people for an agenda. We have authority over them. You know, if I knew back when they had the uh, Vietnam War, if I knew what I know now, I think we could got people praying and maybe maybe saved lives during that. Yeah. That was a disastrous war. And the and the curses that those those monks spoke over those those Vietnam vets to hit be them. Homeless. Yeah. Hit them. It did because it was an ungodly war. Yeah. And and all the things, all the tragedies. See, the, it's God's revealing this to all of us so we can raise up and pray. And you know when you to raise up and pray against all of it, you do have to to know what's going on. And it's very alarming when you see the depth of what's been done, that this isn't the the nation, um, it hasn't, hasn't been able to be that nation that they originally planned it to be because the Freemasons and the occult people came in with their, and the, the those that want the new world order came in and, and redid the nation with pagan statues on every capital, uh, pagan edifices here, it places to draw down the power. Freemasons that don't even know they're participating in an occult activity. Eastern star women that that are standing on these uh, these these points and and making triangles of battle. They don't even know that they're making. Well, Mary, did you know today in D.C. that there are several handbooks? One over the judicial, one over the legislative, one over the executive branch. And it's called the 2020 Freemasonry Handbook on the Executive Branch. And then there's one on the Judicial Branch. And there's one on the Legislative Branch that, they're, that they, they use in, in governing what they're going to do. Well, my, my prayer has been for so many years that the Freemasons themselves will see how they've been deceived and see what's happened to their, their families and their kids and their grandkids. And if they can see it, I believe they'd rise up against it. So we've got to pray that the, the blinders will be taken off their eyes, the hoodwinks will be taken off, that, that God would show them the truth so that they can, they can stop the curses from landing on their families. There was, there was in, in the uh, uh, 19th century, there was one Freemasonry, Freemason that God got a hold of. His name was Charles Finney. Mm-hmm. And after God got a hold of him and they asked him to open up in prayer, and so he opened up their meeting in prayer after God touched him, and they never asked him to pray again. <laughs> uh, in fact, he wrote a book uh, against Freemasonry, and he was probably one of the greater revivalists that we've had in our history besides Edwards, you know, Jonathan Edwards and Whitfield. Uh, and what I have been praying is, Lord, among the Freemasons, create some more Charles Finney's. Yeah, raise him up, Lord. Open their eyes and let them see yes. that they've been deceived and turn them around. We'll be, they'll be the greatest fighters in your kingdom. Yes. Father, let them, let them see the effects of this on their families. Let them see what Satan's done, that he's deceived them and used them for his purposes. And let that righteous anger rise up in them. I'm not their enemy. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for their families. I want them to see because these are the type of things that Satan loves. It's, it's hidden and he can destroy people if he wants to with it. And so God, at this point in time, is revealing the hidden things. And in the meantime, uh, this is a good time for those that, that want to get you know, involved in, let's, let's see this evil stopped. Let's, let's see these crazy wars that, that people are trying to, to get going. Let's just be praying for peace. God, bring peace in, this, in the midst of this. Forgive every sin that, that is fomenting this, and forgive every sin of the, of the people that are involved in, in the occult, and bring peace to that region, Father. Uh, Father, I don't believe this is your will at all. It's, an, it's not your will. Little no. children are being harmed and killed, and, and, and people's homes are being destroyed. Father, bring peace, we pray. And as, as we rise up, guys, with the courage of Esther... Because, I mean, imagine that for Esther. It, it, this, her life was on the line. 
if she walked into that court and he didn't point that scepter at her, she was going to be killed. On the spot. Yeah. And so uh, imagine that. But but look at what look at what God did with Esther in the preparation time. Now, they did a, a pagan preparation, I believe, is what, where they had the women bathe so many times and they had to, uh, the perfume and stuff. All that was getting her ready for the king. But let me tell you what God did with Esther. He gave her such a pure heart. Yes. She was beautiful to look at. The, that's obvious. But she had the beauty of righteousness on her. She had the beauty of the anointing of God on her. And that's what turned the king. Yeah. And, Mary, what we need to realize, everybody loves to quote, you know, perhaps thou hast come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Everybody loves to quote it about every situation. You're not really talking about that verse until your life is on the line. Mm. And then either God moves or you're going to be up there with him in heaven. That's when you have yeah. that Esther moment. And, you know, there's no way that Esther didn't struggle with fear. There's no way that that didn't just, I mean, torment her you know and she was but but had the people praying had the people fasting and we all know that when we pray and fast there's the power of god comes into that situation but she was you know I, i'm sure her knees knocked i know when we first started on our journey and and the more that i saw of how big this was and how it looked like oh man if god doesn't save us ain't nobody gonna save us and i was even i even thought back then i thought God, I don't even think we're going to be able to have enough finances to uh, to do anything. And look what God has done. Yeah, I mean, God is so faithful. If we'll, if we'll, it's it's a process of stepping out. You know, you may not feel courageous, but you say, "I want to be a part of your end time army, God." Uh, and but I'm feeling fearful. It's it's the step that you make to do it. See, then God comes on the scene. He brings, he brings a download of courage. He brings a download of, of strength. And I wanted to read some, uh, some scriptures here because when, when we're faced with a scary situation, it's just a normal um, bodily, bodily function <laughs> because when you're, when you're faced with a situation, you get scared, you get, have a hormone release. And so, so the hormone surge causes your heart to pump blood more forcefully to the muscles, and that's, that's why you feel shaky is because you're getting all this extra blood going to your body in case you need to sprint away, in case there's a bear coming after, and you need yeah. that, that muscle power to get out of there. So, so think of it as this. If you start shaking and you just think, man, my body isn't going to take it, think this is temporary. Yeah. This is temporary. You know, you know what's amazing when, the, when that adrenaline hits like that? Because it, it, it's called the fight or flight. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same hormone that is empowering you to flee can also be the same hormone that empowers you to fight. That's right. The difference is perception. That's it. And you need, you know, if you if you're in a fight, you need your muscles strengthened. You? you you need so, the extra blood flow. You so need the extra energy. The truth is, your knees can knock, but God can take you through it, guys. And I wanted to to read some encouraging scriptures to you, just to to um, help you look at it this way. In Psalm twenty seven fourteen, it says, "Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart." Wait, I say, on the Lord. Daniel ten nineteen says, um, ten nineteen, and it says. Uh, o man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. See, it's not just you in the battle. You're just the person that, that God can say, I've given authority to you. You bow your knee to Jesus and you're, and he's your Lord. You, you have the authority that I've placed on this earth to get something done, but I'm going to be the one that does it. <laughs> He's going to be the one that strengthens you. You know, we need to realize when, whenever the enemy is, is setting up the board for conflict, even the ones that he has convinced are like uh, the king and the queen and the, and the bishop, or whatever, on the chessboard, Mary, they're all pawns. But when God sets up the board, there are no pawns on the board. There's only sons and daughters. That's right. That's right. Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. There were times um, that I can tell you that in this battle, uh, I'd get knocked over. 
I mean, waylaid. But you know what? Every time God God would lift me up. And I could tell it wasn't strength within me or anything. It was just God just came on the scene. He said, I got your back. And he'll get your back. On Joshua 1, 6 through 9, it says, Be strong and have a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. See, there's there's a little clue there. <laughs> there's a clue there. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe, observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Yes. Promises, guys. This is this is how I made it through all these years. I stand in on the promises. God, you said this. You said this. I believe it. I believe what you said. I believe it's true. I believe every story in your word is true. I believe you did everything you said you'd do. I believe that if I if I obey your commandments and I stand in a position in your kingdom where, where I have, have not sinned against you, that I have repented this day and asked forgiveness for my sins and asked you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, created me a clean heart, I believe that I will stand here, I will take my authority, and Almighty God, you will back me up. Yes. And that's how we made it day after day after day. You know, every time that we th- we think of fear or we talk about fear, I always think of Lester Sumrall back. I, I love listening to him. Mm-hmm, and, I do too. And his big thing was there are 365 times in the King James Bible you're commanded not to fear. And it wasn't a divine suggestion. It's a commandment of mm-hmm. God. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, do this. Fear not, do not be dismayed. These the the interesting thing about the commandments, and we see this with um, Adam when we're introduced to commandments. Because Mary, he was given commandments in the garden before the fall. Mm-hmm. Okay, that contained within a commandment is the power to fulfill what God is telling you to do. It's there to provide, protect, and empower. And the moment we we can have our knees knocking and we say, God has told me not Mm -hmm. to fear, but to have faith, it flips the coin on the devil. And from that moment, you can flip from wanting to flee to fighting with supernatural strength. That's exactly right. Because your hope is in God. Yes. You're trusting in him. He's, He's not a liar. He can't lie. Everything he said in his word is there. And the only way that that you get outside of that is when you've you've got a lack of knowledge of something. There's something the devil snuck in. There's something you've not repented of, and that's that's the way I've looked at everything. If things have started going wrong in these last years, I would immediately start looking at what have we done wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a time I've told this before, but there's new listeners, so uh, there was a time when the finances just were drying up, and we were praying, we were tithing we were you know we were well into understanding doors and things like that and so I just started praying I said father uh what what is it and I my eyes were drawn to a a plaque that was on the wall where somebody had nominated Mike to be a Kentucky colonel which is an honor and you get privileges comes from the governor mm -hmm. of Kentucky and so I looked at it and I I noticed the handshake on of the men on that plaque and i said oh mike i said that's connected to freemasonry somehow it was a masonic handshake and so so we repented of that we sent a letter and and respectfully um backed out and and thanked them but just said because of religious beliefs we can't accept this and the day that the letter was written is the day the finances Start Again, coming back around. Yeah. See, Satan will take any yoke he can find, anything. And so when things start going awry, that's when I start saying, God, show me. We've we've done something wrong. We've hit, we've missed something. We've and and then you can be in that once you get these thousands, it seems like, of pagan things out of your life, <clears throat> it's it's like it just flows, doesn't it, honey? Mm-hmm. It does. And that that's part of keeping the commandments of God. The spirit realm is binary. It's it's ones and zeros. In other words, when we look at computer programming, ones and zeros either open up circuits or they shut circuits, okay? Everything that we think, speak, or do 
is opening or closing something. You're either opening a door to God or closing a door to God. You're either opening a door to the devil or you're closing a door to the devil. And as we begin to learn to to repent and begin keeping the commandments of God under the power of the Holy Spirit, you there's this transition because you know imagine uh, because of of us not being taught the things of God, we have maybe one door open to God and ten thousand doors open to the devil. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so we begin turning the ship, we right. be, and we begin changing our behavior. And each time that we do that, we're closing a door to the devil and opening a door to God. Yeah. And then you get to the place where, let's say, there's 5,000 doors open to God and 5,000 doors open to the devil. That's that tipping point. Okay. And then all of a sudden, you may have 1,000 doors open to the devil and, and 9,000 open to God, and you start seeing blessing. That's that. That's the turning. That's why. Yeah. That's why uh, God promised Joshua. Listen, if you meditate in the commandments and and you keep them, you will. It's, it's not begging God to make your way prosperous. What you're speaking, saying, and doing, because you because you're creating the doors to to heaven by what we do. We make our way prosperous. Mm-hmm. We're the ones that are doing it. Now the Holy Spirit's working on the inside of us and, and getting us to repent of things and uh, and He'll He'll cause us to to focus in certain things in the Word of God that we need to change our attitude, change our doings, and as we do, each one of those is a step in the right direction. God put the authority in man. I am the one who closes and opens doors mm-hmm. as far as my life is concerned. Now in life situations. God can open doors to his obedient children that no man can close, which is, is talking about doors of opportunity, not doors of, of entrance into your life. That's that's in your hands. And that that's why we have the Holy Spirit, and he's, he's our teacher. He's leading us into all truth. He's making the Word of God come alive. And, guys, the Word of God starts in Genesis 1-1, not in Matthew 1-1. It's all the Word. Even the great saints, R.A. Torrey said that it takes a whole Bible to make a whole Christian. Well, that's right. And when you look at the in the, the New Testament times, when you read the book of Acts, man, there were like God's special forces out there doing things. They had the Old Testament, the knowledge of who Jesus was, and the Holy Spirit, and they were turning the world upside down. Mm-hmm. Now that we have been convinced to discard the Old Testament, and we start in Matthew, Mary, the world's taken over. We we need we need we need from Genesis to Revelation. We need all that word. In fact, you know one of the and it was a, a podcast I recently did with Doctor John Diamond, had good brother in Lord, and we had a time. And he said, he goes, you know what I tell people? He said, you only see half of who Jesus is, and you know, in in the Gospels because the other half, Messiah Ben David, is in mm-hmm. the Book of Revelation. But he said, if you if he said, read the Old Testament and jump from Malachi to Revelation. And the God of the Old Testament doesn't miss a heartbeat. Yeah, and Jesus' love was was back there. Yeah, and and even though it looks like okay, they had to to take these people out, it was for the love. Yeah, of it, the it, people to survive because they wouldn't have survived it. In fact, you know, people like Eli Marzuli and many others have done research. When God God told Israel to wipe out these people, they were of Nephilim descent. Mm-hmm. They they were they were a hybrid. They were they weren't completely human. And so God said, "Take them out." There were there were giants. There were uh, Anakim. There were Raphaim. There were all these different Eims. And see, we'd never heard of that in the churches before. Oh, well, that's because I mean, they don't ago, understand Genesis. Years 6. ago, you never heard anything like that. And then, and I think it was as as all of this information we started coming across and were able to put together. I think that's when the back of my mind started putting together what they'd seen. And how to put it together with what I was learning in the Word, and it clicked. Yeah, it clicked. There is something that can defeat this. There is, there is a power of God that can come, and and He will protect His people, because because it's all based on what you see in your life, your life experiences. And if you can't see anybody stand against this high level stuff and survive it, what's the chances of you winning a victory? You know, but but I am telling you, my heart is filled with faith that. The authority that Jesus gave us, Mike, can change world events when we stand and pray. That's right. And when we stand and pray and fast together, just like they did in the the day of Esther, I believe there can be world changing events. That's why the enemy, you know, the uh, the seminaries were invaded by the communists in the nineteen twenties. 
Uh, we have all kinds of crazy stuff. We have the New Age movement uh, began infiltrating the charismatic movement back in the 80s. Why were they doing all this infiltration? Because when the body of Christ, the true body of Christ, stands up and prays, and we have, and we're returning to the Bible, returning to publicity, and the Holy Spirit can begin moving on us to pray, we can stop wars. Mm-hmm. We can we can overturn governments by God turning the government's hearts toward God. That's it, and it's it's a world prayer <coughs> because because God wants all people saved. Yes. Every nation. And so, so we're we're praying for Australia. They're having so much trouble right now. We're praying for Canada. We're we're praying for all these nations, for the Ukraine, and and you know there are Christians in Russia. We've got to we've got to yes. look at it from God's perspective of saving souls, His kingdom coming on earth as it is is and His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so I will. Um, I know you'll want to end in prayer and say some things, but I I wanted to pray first, if that's sure. okay, over Go ahead. this situation and and uh, ask forgiveness for some things that may may affect part of these the things that are going on right now. Father, I ask you to forgive the sins of those that are manipulating this war to break their occult power. I ask forgiveness of every witch, warlock, and practitioner of the occult that is using the triangles of battle to increase the demonic power to create a war. I ask you to forgive the sins of every member of the Order of the Eastern Star that has unwittingly joined with the occult during their rituals to form triangles of battle using the name of Esther and her goddess counterpart. I ask forgiveness of the defilement of your word and the defilement of your servant's name, Esther. We bring this attempt to cause World War III for the elite's purposes before your court and ask during this season of Purim for the favor of our King Jesus. Father, there is an attempt to destroy your people during this season. We ask you to judge the unrighteous acts and disrupt every plot and scheme of the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name. Father, I ask for a restoration period where the truth of your word and your kingdom can be dot throughout every nation. I bind the spirit of Haman and Jezebel and all their cohorts, and I loose the power of the kingdom of God to overthrow all attempts of evil leaders and those in positions of power in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. You know, one thing that God has been awakening me to, and I've got... uh one of those uh, journal Bible sets where you can you have like a blank page on each side. I'm going through the Psalms right now because it is filled with spiritual warfare prayers. There are pregatory prayers in there. And they're mighty powers. It's like gnash their teeth. <laughs> and, you know, several of them, the, God just keeps me t- going back to Psalms chapter 2, mm-hmm. that in the spirit realm, I'm warning the leaders, kiss the son. You're planning against the son. Kiss the son before he gets angry. Number one, that. And number two, Lord, I stand with Jesus that he would ask for the nations. That this whole thing is about Jesus getting the nations back from the principalities and powers that when God divorced humanity at the Tower of Babel, that they were given over to these principalities and powers that are doing all of these things. They're in line with Lucifer. They're in line with the kingdom of darkness. And... Jesus set his kingdom to get the nations back. And so, Lord, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would give the nations back to Jesus, that you would move by the power of your spirit, Father. Do what you need to do. Let heaven move in ways that we have not seen since creation. Yes That you would get the nations back and that principalities and powers would fall and that their leadership would fall fail for your great because Jesus is raising his scepter and saying I claim this nation and I claim that nation yes and let him clean house Lord God for the sake of your great name and for the sake of your people in the earth father we ask that you would move and that you would bring peace and that you would strengthen the remnant father one of the greatest prayers that we have about strength is that to this day the rabbis pray over Israel is when the prophet said, be strong, be strong, be strengthened. And Father, the word says that we are strengthened in our inner man with the might of God, that we can be strong in the power of the Lord and the power of his might because we're his children. And Father, I speak that over your children. I command bondages to be broken. I command our, 
our perceptions to be straightened out to where they line up with Jesus, they line up with the word of God so that we can be instruments of righteousness in the earth to bring your kingdom everywhere we go. In Jesus' name. Remember, we love you guys. We're praying for you and can't wait to see you at the conferences. God bless and looking forward to seeing a lot of our friends in Dallas. And we thank you. We're looking for everything that God's going to do, and we're just excited about the days ahead. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Kerr, co-founder of Hear the Watchman. And I'd like to join in with Dr. Michael Lake in inviting you to come out to Grapevine, Texas, March 17th through the 20th, for our Eyes to See conference. It is the first time that we've been able to gather together again and worship and learn and just be blessed by the speakers who are, who are going to be there to share with you. Those would be none other than Dr. Michael Lake, Jamie Walden, Pastor Paul Bagley, Derek Gilbert, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Dave Hodges, Thomas Dunn, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, Ohio Brett, John and Chelsea Jubilee, and yours truly, Mike and Jeannie Kerr. So get out and get involved. Come out and let's gather again and fellowship and pray together. There's nothing like it. Please go to www.hearthewatchmen.com and sign up today. We have discounted hotel rooms available. It's just a wonderful experience. And use the promotional code LAKE20 and save $20 off the price of your ticket to attend the conference. We'll see you all in Grapevine, Texas. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.